Hi, in this video I'll show you how to create realistic surface textures and shaders. So stick around until the end. If you are interested in learning the latest 3D techniques, particularly in Blender, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Let's start with Quixel Mixer, a software that makes it easy to create surface textures. Quixel Mixer is free software. To get started, open the file menu, create a new project and give it a name. Make sure to set the project to the highest quality. Alright, here's the project. You can also choose different meshes instead of the plane. You can also increase the plane size if needed. Now the current size works well. In the layer section, you can add various types of layers. For instance, this one is used to adding pre-made layers. You can download these layers for free from the online section. Additionally, you can add decals, smart materials, solid layers, and liquids. This isn't a detailed tutorial on the suffer, but if you'd like one, let me know in the comments. Let's add a pre-mid layer for my local library. You can download assets from the online section. Now let's open this layer. This layer contains several sub-layers. You can add more pre-made layers as well. This layer has been added on top of the previous one, but it doesn't fully cover it. Now let's score the attributes. Height is straightforward. Its real benefit shows when you have multiple layers. This rule applies to all the other layers as well. Here we have the material list, which allows us to modify or replace each texture. Let's start by modifying the contrast, for example. This section offers limited options for modification. We can add a solid layer and customize it as needed, which will create an empty layer for us. This layer has various attributes, like adding noise, adjusting the height, and more. As you can see, increasing the height caused the layer below to be completely covered. We can control how much this layer blends with the one below with this option. Now let's remove it and introduce a final layer, liquid. This adds a water layer, providing you with controls for the water itself, not just surface material. For instance, instead of the height, uh, we now have a threshold control here. As you can see, there are many attributes, but I don't want to go into them right now. For the final touch, let's slightly increase the roughness. A gray color could work well. Okay, good. Next, navigate to the export tab where we can specify the destination for the textures. You can choose a custom path or the default library path you specify during the software setup. Select custom and ensure that create subfolder is enabled, so a folder for the texture is created automatically. Now let's choose a name for the textures. You can also select a preset to determine which textures will be exported. We can also include other textures, like gloss, but since we already have roughness, gloss isn't necessary. We can include emission and opacity, but I'll need to add them to the layers first. Once we activate one of these, we'll need to adjust the settings. 
Make sure the quality is set to 8K, then click export. For this tutorial, I'll be using Blender 4.2. Now let's check out the textures we exported. These are all the textures and they have a large file size for texture maps. However, the quality is perfect. Press Shift A, go to Mesh and add a plane, then press S to scale it up. Now open the bottom window and switch to the shader editor. With the plane selected, click New to create a new material. Make sure the shader is principled BSDF and ensure EV is selected as the render engine. Press Z and switch to render mode. Next, let's import the textures. Since metalness is black, we don't need to import it. Next, we need to connect the textures to the shader. Start by connecting the albedo to the base color. Select non-color for the roughness in the color space section, then connect it to the shader. This will highlight the wet areas. I'll use the ambient occlusion map differently later. For now, let's connect the normal map. Select non-color for it, then press Shift A and search for the normal map node. Connect the normal texture to the color input pin, then connect the normal pin to the shader. The lighting isn't quite right. There's point light in the scene that I need to remove. Now I get to the world section in the shader editor and add HDRI lighting. Press Shift A and look for the environment texture node. Connect the node to the background node, then click open. Let's choose one of these HDRIs, which I downloaded from the HDRI Haven website. Great, I also go into detail about lighting in HDRI in the tutorial here. Now now get to the object section where we'll apply the AO map. I want to combine this map with the albedo texture. Press Ctrl Shift and left click on the AO map to preview it. This will add beautiful ambient shadows to the ground. Press Shift A and look for the mix color node. Now connect the albedo and AO maps to the mix color node. But the result isn't what I expected. I need to switch to multiply instead of the mix color. Now I can compare it to the previous version by adjusting the factor value. As you can see the ambient shadows enhance the ground and make it look more realistic. Now let's enhance the details by adding displacement. Go to the modifier section and locate the subdivision surface modifier. Set it to simple and then choose a suitable number for the levels. We also need to set the render level to 7. Next, we need to add the Displace modifier. Click New and set the coordinates to UV. Next, go to the Texture section and load the Displacement map. Choose the Displacement map. 
Remember to set the color space to non-color. In the display spotify, lower the string value. I need to lower it a bit more. As you can see, there are some hard edges on the surface. To fix this, right click on the area. Next, select the Shade Smooth option. Now our material is ready. We can also improve the quality by using ray tracing, which I explained in the tutorial here. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And feel free to share your ideas and questions in the comments. Thank you.